Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Excuse my voice, still trying to kick this stinking cold, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Tyson Fury situation with his trainer because I have doubts whether Sugar Hill will be back. And I know I'm not alone in thinking this. Other, I've heard other people say it too. Um, the mess that was the corner against Usyk was kind of depressing. If you're a, if you were a Fury fan, um, you're, you're not going to have been happy. You know, you're going to be thinking what, what the hell was going on there. Uh, and yeah, you'd be thinking that with good reason because you had, as we know, you had Sugar Hill, who's the head trainer, who is, you know, a relatively softly spoken guy. Um, you've got the blustering buffoonery of of John Fury in Tyson's ear. You've got Andy Lee, who I was surprised at because Andy Lee is normally a reliable guy; he's a good trainer. But why was he bunnying in Tyson's other ear? So Tyson's got it in stereo before Sugar Hill even throws his two cents in, and he's coming. He's the guy who's meant to be the, as I said before in videos, the, you know, the quiet, uh, the lucid, concise, reassuring voice that gives within though that very limited period of sixty seconds, some um, some necessary um, advice and encouragement and motivation and all of that stuff that goes towards making use of that you know minute between rounds. Um, but if, if we're right and if our suspicions are valid, who would take over as Fury's head coach? Well, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you've got to ask who's available. Ben Davison won't return. I think there's too much water under the bridge there. And of course he's training Joshua as well. Um, could Fury go for another American trainer? At this stage of his career, I wouldn't rule it out, but no, I don't think so. I think he'd want someone close to home. No doubt John Fury would love the gig, which I think would be terrible, terrible decision. Um, man with absolutely no track record of, of uh, training professional fighters, not really. Um, he's a boxing man. I mean, don't get me wrong, but you can be a boxing man, but not have any experience as a trainer and you certainly I still think that in a corner you need a cool head to navigate your fighter through the choppy waters of some sort of crisis like in the ninth round against Usyk John Fury is not that man Andy Lee is a possibility but there again there may be a conflict of interest there because he trains Joseph Parker and Joseph Parker in the past was I mean if you go back a couple of years he was you know basically a Tyson Fury cheerleader. He's very close to the Furies. He was part of their inner circle. And But the problem is with the Furies is that there is so much, um, it's become so much of a cult, so much of a, it's, it's become so sort of David Koresh, so Jim Jones, that almost if you give any kind of constructive criticism, that is to say, you know, you're doing this wrong, you need to do it this way, you know, and you're not having a go at anyone, but you want to bring out the best of them and so on. If you do that, uh, you're almost seen as someone who's suddenly kicked to the out, outskirts or ostracized. And this is madness, of course, madness. Now, Lee, I think Lee and Andy Lee and Tyson, am I right in saying their grandmothers are cousins or they're connected in some way? There is some sort of family connection there. So and Andy Lee is a very um, calm voice in the corner. Uh, and he's he gives good advice. And I think he's cut his teeth very, very well as a trainer. He's a good trainer. Um, as far as people on the outside looking in are concerned, um, I mean, who is there? We haven't heard a lot from Adam Booth lately, but there's, I don't think there's any way he, he'd uh, <laughs> join that sort of chaos. Certainly... Shane McGuigan has made it very clear he doesn't like the idea of, you know, a chaotic, high, uh, high maintenance uh, type of environment with um, huge entourages and all that. He's been very, very opposed to that, vocally opposed to it with, I think, Joshua. So I don't think I don't see him, um, you know, joining in and j jumping in with uh, into the sort of fury craziness. Um and, of course, there's a possibility that Sugar Hill might stay. I mean, he might think, do you know what? 
I'm getting paid. If they want to mess everything up, let them get on with it. Who cares? I'll come here. I'll, I'll go through the motions. I'll do my thing and I'll get paid. Uh, but if Fury, with the pending, um, with the pending uh, rematch, possibly in late December or just before Christmas, on twenty twenty first of December, they mentioned, if that's going to be uh, the date, I say if because that's that's always a big if where these things are concerned. Then Fury will need if he's if he does, is going to get a new trainer, he's going to want to gel with him. Um, and he's going to want to get himself to the point where he is working on stuff. If if he's serious about a, a trainer who's going to bring something new to the party and not just go through the motions, otherwise he might as well stick with Sugar Hill. Otherwise, John Fury might as well jump in. I mean, it, it, there are trainers, there are people who carry stick a towel over, over their shoulder and carry a bucket, and there are others that are proper trainers, and they say, right, I'm in charge. Like I said before, can you imagine if Peter Fury was in charge? Can you imagine him tolerating that sort of nonsense that was going on in the corner against Usek? Not a chance. He'd be gone. You know, it's my way or the highway with Peter, and, and that's the way it should be. You know, I've never tried a fighter in my life, but anything that I, I do where I am appointed to do a job, as uh, either do, do a job as a subordinate or as the leader, I do it my way. If you hire me to do a job, you, you know, shut up and let me do it. And anyone around me who was supposed to be helping me, they do what I say. You know, I'll listen, obviously you listen to to um, sensible suggestions, but it's kind of like after that ninth round, I mean, if anyone had anything to say, whether it was Andy Lee, John Fury or anyone else, the way to do it was to speak during a round, speak to the trainer, the head trainer, and then you go through the head trainer and the head, if, if the, someone else says something sensible, the head trainer then says, okay, I'll put it to the fighter. And then you, you know, the head trainer is the first port of call. Should be the only port of call, really. And if Fury, if Tyson Fury is serious <clears throat> about having a proper trainer in the corner, someone that he's going to listen to, someone where he can have a crisis like that ninth round, come back and know exactly what he needs to do, you know, know that he's got a guy in the corner who he can lean on, then he's going to have to park his ego at the door and decide, OK, I'll get someone decent in, someone who I know is good, someone who might be able to add something to the mix, you know. I know they're extremely different fighters in terms of psychology, psyche, mentality, and so on, and emotion. But if you look at Daniel Dubois, not comparing him to Tyson Fury, but just look at Daniel Dubois, the improvements under Daniel Dubois, I think, come from the fact that in the corner he has got Don Charles, who is a perfect fit mentally, psychologically. And therefore, when Daniel was having that rough patch in the fourth, fifth round against Gerald Miller, he came back to the corner knowing damn well that the information he was going to receive was wise information, was good observatory information, which had been gathered, and he was going to relay it to him. And he, Don speaks to Daniel in a way that not only makes him feel confident, makes him feel self-assured, reassured, but also he has faith, he has, he has uh, uh, a great deal of belief in what Don is saying. Now, Fury, I think, is... In fistic terms, his IQ is far higher than Daniel Dubois. He's a far more mature fighter than Daniel Dubois. When all is said and done, he might even be a more mature man, which is saying something because the way he behaves sometimes. But he might uh, he might feel, well, I don't need that type of person. That's fine. But everybody, no one is a complete package. Everybody has something that can be added, even if they don't realize it. And if you find someone who's who you do have a lot of sincerity with, you, you do feel that they are talking sensibly and they have something to offer and they make you think, do you know what? I hadn't thought of that before. That's worth thinking about. What do you mean by that? And then you have that rapport, that sort of synergy that exists between a fighter and a trainer. If you find that and you have an open mind and it's not all about ego it, and it's all about discipline, then hold on to it. Hold on to it. Who might that person be? Apart from Andy Lee, as a possibility, I can't really think of anyone offhand. Can you think of anyone? If so, comments below. Give me your suggestions. I know a lot of you are going to say, if only Peter would come back, but I don't think he will. I don't think he will not now. You know, you never know, but they family, and they? But I don't know. Seems to have been a lot of bridges burnt there. But anyway, let me know what you think. 
comments below. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the like button as well and spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing. I always enjoy reading your comments. Meanwhile, take care and bye for now.